It's the Germany Experience, the podcast about life in Germany as seen through the eyes of outsiders. I'm your host, Sean. Welcome to the show. Visit the website, thegermanyexperience.de for more information about the podcast. And if you want to get in touch with me, mail me at info at thegermanyexperience.de. What you're going to hear in this episode is a recording of a live Instagram stream that I did with Nicole of the Expat Cast, and we discuss our charity challenge, Thregi Padvo, and also we give our own personal low and high points of 2021, and I read out some low and high points from some followers on Instagram. So that's what you're about to hear. I just want to give you an update on the charity challenge in the call that you're about to hear. The update that I gave was that I was at 345 euros, but now, at as of today, I'm on 445 euros, which means that I'm so close to the goal of raising 500 euros for Kinderlachen, which is the charity that I'm supporting. So I just need another 55 euros to hit that 500 euro point. And not only that, I am so impressed that we've been able to raise so much money between Nicole and I. This has been such an amazing thing. It excites me so much that I'm able to give back something to Germany. And it's because of you, everyone who donated. Thank you so, so much. And now here is Nicole from the Expat Cast. It's good to see you, Nicole, despite the fact that you're my sworn rival. It's horrible to see you, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's that's a good start. It can only get better from there. But anyway, this is this is my first ever Instagram live video. Is it yours, Nicole? Yeah, this it's is yours awesome. too, right? This is my... Yeah. I, I don't think I've even really watched one, at least not on purpose. So I don't know how this is going <laughs> at all. Um, but yeah, thanks for inviting me. We're going to figure this out together. Yeah, we're going to figure this out together. And so it's Nicole from the Expat Cast and me from the Germany Experience. And um, Nicole, the other question that I want is, did you ever think that me as your podcast nemesis inviting you to an Instagram live video could be some kind of trap? Did you ever consider that? I was never threatened because I don't find you threatening because I know I am just <laughs> through and through. <laughs> Um, that is I don't know. Fair enough. Confidence stable. I'm not, none of these things are true. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to be doing this evening, and, th and Nicole, thanks so much for joining. Um, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at uh, s s uh, our highs and lows of 2021. And we're also, uh, I've also got some uh, feedback from uh, Instagram uh, followers. Before we get to the highs and lows of 2021, we have to speak about Tregi Padvo, Nicole. Heck yeah, we do. Things have been happening. This has been a wild year. <laughs> it has been a wild, crazy year. We've had like 700 lead changes, I think, because you took the lead, then I took the lead, then you took the lead again. And I, at the moment, as it stands, I'll give you the, the last time that I looked, I am in the lead with 345 euros and you are on 230 euros. I just want to say that that means together we've raised 500 euros uh, and that kind of blows my mind. Yeah, that super blows my mind. I mean, I, yeah. I, I set that as a goal. When you when you set up the page, you can set up a goal. And I was like, 500, that's ridiculous, but I'm going to put that in. And now it's real. Now it's happening. Um, though I have to say this, yeah. this whole pattern of me having a lead for all of five seconds and then just re repeatedly losing it and losing it until the end, this feels familiar to me. This is, I think, how it's gone in years <laughs> past. Um, but yeah, yeah I, have a, I have a question for you. You've said that this we're talking about Threga Padfo, right? What does it stand for? What you were asking me what it stands for? You're the one you who coined it. it. Why must I tell you what it stands for? <laughs> it stands for okay. So it stands for the you've called me a bit of, of God's. It's third ever expat. Nope. No wait. Third thregi. <laughs> you know you're putting me under pressure, Nicole. Yep. Expat. Uh, uh, third ever. Third ever Germany expat podcasters advent donation face off. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me by surprise for asking me what it's actually about uh yeah so and 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 just for people who might, might not know we ha we do this every year nicole and i run a charity challenge where we see which of us can raise more money for charity and uh this is the third as as the name suggests this is the third year that we're doing it and we always have a lot of fun we challenge each other and i i would say one of my podcast highlights of this year nicole was hearing you uh sing <laughs> the christmas song on your podcast 
did it um did it bring you back to the days when you had to do a thrag- no you had to do a sega podpo song last year for the second ever <laughs> That's right. Last year I had to do uh, write a whole jingle, which we didn't we didn't pull out this year, but maybe we'll save it for next year when it's the fourth ever. Oh my gosh! Then it's this. Then it's Vega Podvo again. Oh my gosh! Because that was the first one, and now the fourth. One. Okay, we'll have to talk. We've got we've got eleven months that's, to figure that's this ne- out. <laughs> that's next year's problem, uh, Nicole. We, we'll, we'll figure it out that way. Um, but yeah, and what I will say about the the whole thing was what was very exciting was that. Uh, you, we, I had, first of all, you had someone, so the donations that were coming in were like 10 euros, 20 euros, 25 euros, uh, occasionally 50 euros. And then you had someone donate 100 euros, which put you in the lead, which was amazing. It was a very wild moment. And I, I, I texted you being like, I think it's a mistake. I think he didn't mean to. Um, and I just yeah. was in utter shock. And then a couple of days later, I don't know if someone was inspired <laughs> or wanted to, uh, Yeah. Keep up with the Joneses. Um, or also made the same typo when they t- t- typed in an extra zero. Because when it came through, then I got a donation for 100 euros as well. And when I when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God, this exactly like you did. I understand your reaction because I was like, this must be an error, like 100 euros. But but people have been so generous, even the people who like across the board, I'm just blown away by their generosity. And it, it makes me feel really good that it's going to children and yeah challenging situations across Germany because I think especially this exactly. year that's something that's Ex- very important uh, it, it's a it, it's a cause that's very dear to my heart because I love uh, supporting causes that have to do with children and as we've said over the past few weeks as well as we do this in previous years like it's just something that it's cool to be able to give back to Germany because we've gotten so much from Germany so this is very exciting that we have this platform and that people support us enough to donate us uh, d- donate on our behalf to a charity and yeah so so people still have a few days to swing this thing because i am uh, i think over a hundred hundred euros in the lead at the moment so if you want to get nicole uh closer to me or or beating me then the, now the, you've got four days to do it four days to do it and and uh if you like the drama you could wait till the last day uh and and drop a drop of donation in there uh, on one of I our love that donations idea. Uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> the link the link to my donation link is in my profile and uh, Nicole I think you've got it in your profile as well. I do, yeah. There is one more thing I wanted to say on the topic. I um well, I was thinking back on 2021 and like what were the big moments? What were the big like news stories for instance? Um and one really big news story this year was about um the politicians because it was election year in Germany and so all of them, you know, people are looking into their lives and trying to find issues here and there. And there was actually multiple, um, there were multiple plagiarism issues where they found certain politicians actually had plagiarized certain really key findings. And I don't know, I just think that's relevant to bring into the conversation because your challenge this year for Thregapadvo was to write a poem. And your poem definitely included key lines that were from the original poem. And the whole thing was that you were supposed to rewrite it, make it your own. And you just like copy and pasted it. So you are right there out there with the top German politicians just plagiarizing away <laughs> yeah, well, well i am german now so maybe i'm working my way towards german politics who knows nicole but i will say this you didn't stipulate in the rules you said i had to rewrite a, a german poem and let it be said if you if you're going to be whipping out the plagiarism uh, uh, things right now let me just say that in your song your christmas song there was distinct fa la 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 which were also in the original christmas song uh... stands to reason plagiarism Sean, those were those were German falalas. It's spelled differently, <laughs> so I actually don't think that's true. I think that's really actually how, quite. How uh, are how are German falalas spelled, Nicole? I can't because it's verbal right now, so I can't do that. But it's different, <laughs> believe me. I just one one real quick thing. Um, what's this line here? I have your poem right before me. Uh, children <laughs> nestled snug in their beds with visions of sugar plums dancing in their heads. It's two full lines. Beautiful. One to one. It's not your writing. No, the lines are slightly different, Nicole. Very, very slightly tweaked if you look at the original poem. So. Yeah, so guys, if you uh, want I to will... support a plagiarizer, you can give money to Sean, I guess. But um, if you want to support originality and German falalas, <laughs> donate via the expat cast. Link in the bio. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I will lawyer up and take take uh, these these uh, plagiarism threats very seriously, very seriously. Please do. So we're going to sort that out. <laughs> we'll have to settle. 
that out of court. Uh, like Nicole said, we have until the 24th of December to donate. What I will say is that the way that you can you, we could set the Kinderlachen cam- campaigns up is that they actually run until sometime in January. I think mine ends in on the 6th of January and yours runs even later. So if you're only listening to the episodes later on, you're only listening to this sometime early in January, you could still actually go and donate. It doesn't count towards Nicole and I's rivalry or our competition, but you'd still be helping out a great charity cause. But and if I come see, back from behind in does. January, maybe it counts. Maybe, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it counts. We can take the, t- the totals to next year's uh, charity challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing the final rankings and then deciding, uh, well, seeing who wins, and then we'll see what the reward is because there have been... You know, yeah. that's a big part of it, too. It's it's oh, yeah. bragging rights and um, a as of yet to be announced and also determined uh, <laughs> prize. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We have not discussed this, have we? <laughs> as we do every year. We always do it very late. Um, yeah. So it, like we said, uh, but I just want to say thank you to everyone who has donated to either Nicole or to me so far. It's amazing, amazing, amazing that that uh, we've been able to raise over 500 Euros. And I must say also, when, when we were doing some trash talk on Instagram, I got a private message from someone who said, uh, like she she copied the, she replied to a story where we were trash talking back and forth. And she said, is this real, Sean? And I was like, ah, oh, it is so real. It is totally real. This is not play. This is not make believe. Hold me back. Hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Now on to just, just a brief look at 2021 and how it was uh, for you. Nicole, I, I'll, I'll start with you, 2021. We're, we're going to do a high-low. And as I learned from a very good friend of mine and a previous guest on the show, Dominic, he he's a German and he was on a few episodes of the German Experience. And he always said, never do high-low, it's always low-high. So you start with the, the negative thing and then you, then you go into the positive. So you end up on a high. So you don't end up feeling down and in the dumps and whatever else. So if I had to ask you, Nicole, what were your low and what was your low and your high in 2021? What was the year like for you? So I was thinking about this and I thought like the obvious answer is the five solid months of lockdown that started off 2021 um, on top of the couple that were the end of 2020. But I mean, I'm going to put that aside because A, it's just obvious it was not great. And B, actually, I, I kind of more or less made the most of it, you know, of course, hit my limits at some points, but it was kind of okay. Um, But (laughs) my low is something that started during lockdown, which is I decided that I should get my motorcycle license. I don't really have any reason why I just decided I should do this. And I started working on it um, end of March. I finally got the license mid-November. Yeah, mid-November. It took so long. And I mean, I got it. So it's a happy ending in that sense. But the, I, I categorize it as a low because it's it was just it made me interact with German bureaucracy and systems even more. <laughs> and that, yeah, so it started with me trying to file the paperwork to start the license. And I had to go back three times because the paperwork was slightly wrong. And by the third time, the lady spoke at me in, in such a way that I, I was crying and I had to sit there and talk to her and say, like, did you want to make me cry or were you just speaking to me like that because you don't think I'm a human being? And um, that was not a great start. And then the whole time I was doing my motorcycle lessons, I, yeah, I kept having issues with the driving instructor and I couldn't tell if he was not taking me seriously because I'm a woman or a foreigner or if he just is. Both. Yeah, or both or he's, or he is taking me seriously and I'm misunderstanding his signals. And and I, I didn't really want to think badly of this person. And so I just felt, really kind of icky most of the time doing these lessons because I I did have this negative feeling and I didn't want it or like it, but I didn't know if it was there or not. So actually the whole process ended up being, yeah, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of money. Um, and it wasn't that fun. (laughs) So we'll see. I think maybe in the next year, maybe I'll actually get a motorcycle and drive on my own. I don't have to deal with the offices anymore. I don't have to deal with the driving instructor anymore, but this was kind of a bit of a classic low of life in Germany is like I had to go to the Rathaus, the city hall a lot, and that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because after you've been in Germany for a while, you don't really have to deal with that bureaucracy mm-hmm. that much anymore. So you kind of you kind of forget. You still hear the stories from foreigners talking about their experiences with it. But then when you when you when you have to do something like you did, you get faced with it again and you're like, oh, yeah. I remember this. This is uh, this is not cool. And there seems to be a lot of bureaucracy around licenses because I often hear 
foreigners who've been here for a while, when they do the some kind of licensing process, that is where there's so much bureaucracy uh, that, that they that they run into. Yeah, yeah, and I think I'd sort of almost gaslighted myself because I I was like, you know, most of the time I was interacting with AMPs, with offices, my German wasn't so good or I was really stressed out. I was in a bad place. So I probably was showing up really poorly and that's why it went wrong. Um, and then to yeah. go in with my German, the best it's ever been, a pretty good place in life. Like there wasn't really these excuses that I was doing something wrong. And then to have the same reaction, I was like, oh, right. It wasn't oh. Me. I mean, it is, of course, like you can always make a situation better or worse. And I don't want to take um, take away my own responsibility because it was definitely there. But yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's my low. <laughs> my high. I didn't think of this actually until right now, but I had to extend my visa this year and they extended it until the end of my passport. So I actually theoretically won't have to go to the Alcender Bajorda, the, the foreigner's office for years. Um, which, I, yeah, I honestly forgot about till right now, but that's pretty good. <laughs> Speaking of. That's oh, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so there you go. But for – an uh, yeah, that was just a bit spontaneous. I'm it was hard for me to think of a high because there were actually a lot of really good moments. But I think my high was probably going home to the States for three weeks in September. I got to go to my brother's mm. wedding where my family, who's like 50-some people at this point, all came together um, for the event. And we were able to do it relatively safe. And um, everyone hadn't seen each other in that long, you know? And then on top of that, my my friends all managed to come home at the same time. We also hadn't seen each other in years. And leading up to the trip, I was almost dreading it. I, I was just really anxious about it, thinking so much has changed. The world's so different. COVID's terrifying. Um, and so to get there and have a wonderful three weeks where I just was really happy and then also was really, really happy to be coming back to Germany was, yeah, it was a really good feeling. Yeah, so those those that's where your lows and highs, and I think for a lot of foreigners, the highs this year would have been the trips back home, managing to get back home for for to see family and friends again. Yeah, very cool. What about very you? Cool. Me, my my um my low. I had a bit of a problem with with my low because there's there was there there, there were several things, but I think one of the things that really has been getting to me over a longer period of time now uh, is this um, uh, this the the effects of the pandemic on 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 things that we're seeing like uh, and specifically seeing the division that's happening in Germany now like it's it's the, this the Spaltung as the Germans say this this kind of uh, clear clear division between Impfgegner or the anti-vaxxers and uh, people who want to get vaccinated, and I mean it's it is a strong topic. It is a very hot topic, but I think what's getting me down and my, my low for this year is seeing just how strongly this is dividing people. And I and I and I think it's the minority. It's, in fact, it's not. I think it's a minority. It definitely is the minority that are against it. But even. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's just interesting to see how both sides are going uh, about with this. And and just to be clear, I've been vaccinated twice. I'm going to get boosted as soon as I can, and I will get as many boosts uh, boosters as I need to get. So it's clear which side, if you want to call it a side, that I'm on. But but I think what's what what I don't like seeing is just uh, these fault lines that are opening up and seeing how we the people on how people are not listening to each other on either side. Like it's very. It's it's become such a polarizing topic, and people are so adamant and strong about it. And there's so much judgmental and vitriolic rhetoric being thrown around everywhere. It's just, uh, it, it's it's really over over the long longer period, it's going to be down. And I think, for me personally, uh, that there, I, I think that there's no political viewpoint that should have us completely shut out another human being, and just not like try and understand at first where they're coming from. And and I think part of the issue is that the people's judgment have been clouded by people on social media and on TV. So they're seeing those as mouthpieces for this, uh, and they're hearing those points. And those are people obviously with very strong polarizing views. But uh, it's not like that with everyone. And I think I think I think I would just like to see people taking more time to see. Okay, this human being in front of me, what is their reasons for whatever they're playing? And I'm talking for both sides. I'm not just talking for one side. Or the other, I, I think it's it's yeah, it's just not cool to see to to see this kind of division happening. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's it my reminds low. me. I don't know, I don't know how it is for you, but it reminds me of being back in the U.S. in 2016, right before I moved here. Um, right, there was similar vibes, very different topics. Yeah, I, I don't like having that in the environment again here, and it you know it didn't yeah. lead to good things for my people. So 
So maybe yeah. we can do better here. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, it's it's it, it's that's the thing. I mean, it's just like uh, I, the one thing I always valued about Germany actually was the the open discourse that they have here and the the way that they've always listened. But this that's just gone out of the window a little bit with this whole COVID thing. But like you said, it is a difficult uh, thing. There's there's actual human lives at stake in this issue as well. So I guess. You know, it's 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 a hot button issue. So, but that's that's my low, and I, I'm hoping that it's just the minority, and uh, that people can learn to listen to each other a little bit about this, and that hopefully, as things move on, the pandemic eases up, and this whole thing, uh, you know, gets better, and maybe we can learn something from this. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, Nicole. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> that. That note, my high for the year was also much like you. Uh, I got a chance to get back to South Africa after four years. So wow. I got to visit my dad and my brothers and I haven't seen them for four years, as, as I just said. And uh, my dad had his 70th birthday and I just had a window, a period of time in summer where the, the, the numbers were good on both Germany side and the South Africa side that I could go back to Germany. So that was pretty cool um, to be able to do. Yeah. Actually, this is so cheesy, but it really, it gives me chills hearing stories like that. Like, it just makes me really, really happy for you. And I hope that it was as wonderful as I'm sure it was. (laughs) It was, it it was so good for my spirit. Like, I just, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my chest. It wasn't perfect because I wasn't able to take my kids and uh, wife back with me. It was just me alone. And my dad has not met his youngest granddaughter, for example, and he hasn't seen his other grandkids for four years. So that still is is something that weighs on my heart a little bit. For me, it was just to see my family, to see my, my close friends from South Africa was just like, it just did huge things for my mindset. So it was really cool to get back. And this year, hopefully with the whole family, we'll be able to get back. So that will be that, hopefully the high for 2022 for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, I was going to invite someone into this. Oh, he is here. Let me see if I can get uh, someone from the chat in. Let's see if how this works. Uh, and this is Pop Your Cultural Cherry. It's Lawan, who hosts the Pop Your Cultural Cherry uh, podcast, and he's been a Hi. he's been a guest on both of our podcasts. How's it going, Lawan? Hey, hey guys! I, I see you guys hanging out. The rivalry, everything, and all the the chat that you guys are doing, amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah, we're we're talking nicely with each other right now, but it's all just a sparring uh, and, and sizing sure. each other up. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> can definitely do that. <laughs> So, Lamont, you you also wrote when I asked for uh, people's lows and highs of 2021, and uh, you you gave me your lows and highs. So, I thought I would just bring you into the call and ask you maybe just to just to give us your your lows and highs of 2021. Right. I guess I guess my low was was actually after the two pandemic. It actually takes a toll on your body, and I haven't been weighing myself recently. <laughs> and then when I just weighed myself like a month ago, and I realized, oh my god, like I have put on a lot of weight and I need to kind of, you know, get back to my old shape. And I think that's, that's true for a lot of people who, you oh, yeah. know, had, found it hard to get back into the gym or, you know, the, some of the gyms closed for, for uh, a long period of time. And I think that's, that's my low. And, and also what, what Nicole was saying about her experience um, with German bureaucracy. So I had my, my fair share the other, the other day. So I was a, uh, Actually, I, I I came back from the Philippines, and that's my high. Uh, mm. I'll, I'll talk about that a bit later. But I came back because I needed to um, renew my 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 work permit. So I I had to renew my work permit, which meant I needed to talk to the people from the Outland of the Hood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and exactly like what Nicole was saying, like my my German's gotten a bit a bit better. Um, I thought I could do it by myself, but. Oh my God, it's like <laughs> impossible. And then, I don't know, I had to get my girlfriend to step in because like, I could understand everything she's saying, but she was just so mean to me. And I ended up like putting down the phone because like, why is she like like this to me? So I called her back, but I had my girlfriend talk to her, um, uh-huh. who's, who's German. So my German girlfriend um, got back on the phone with her and, and you know, talked things out. Um, she told me to send her an email, which she hasn't gotten back to in a week. So I don't know. Uh, just, sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, that's frustrating. That is frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys know how it is, and I guess yeah, a lot and, of people know. And you're not going to hear anything until the new year because uh, this is this is the the type. Uh, this is some, someone is saying uh, in the chat. Tora Tora Colada says, "This is what I do for a living: talk to the Ausländerbehörde." Oh man, brave job. <laughs> um, 
So okay, so then your that was your your low. Uh, yeah, those two things were your lows. What about your highs? So my high was obviously getting. So I, I went back for for five weeks, um, and that was just last month. So I went back to the Philippines for my sister's wedding, um, and but I had to cut that trip short. I could have actually worked from there because I can work from home for for my job. Uh, but yeah, I had to go back for this to renew my my uh, my my work permit because that would expire end of January next year uh, because of this whole pandemic thing. I don't know if I'll get stuck there and end up not having a work permit for me to be able to come back. So I thought, you know, I booked it early, but yeah, it was, it was a good five weeks with family. I also got to attend a friend's, uh, uh, bachelor party. So that's, that's nice. I've been asking your friends to go to a bachelor party. So that, well, yeah. What was that? Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, but, it, but it, it, again, it's another it's another foreigner that, that they're high for this year is getting back getting back home. So I think that's, that's very cool. Um, yeah, but but very cool, uh, Lawan. Thanks thanks so much for joining. And Lawan's podcast is, as I said, Pop Your Cultural Cherry, and hey, he thanks. he puts up his episodes regularly. And uh, I I think we've already spoken. You're also going to be back on the the podcast this year sometime. My podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, and and I'm going to make more like German. Germany specific content for for this next season. So I, I was thinking about what I do in twenty twenty two, and that's something I want to, mm. to focus on at least for next season. So a new rival appears. Bring it on! <laughs> hey, hey, just for next season. I want to. <laughs> Nicole and I are very good at teaming up against a common enemy. The enemy of my enemy. <laughs> Hey, we're all friends here. Are we? No, I'm going to make a secret alliance with Alwyn behind your back, Sean. <laughs> you won't see it coming. Hey. I mean, we, we, we'll talk about some similar topics like Outlander behavior. At least, like, there's more perspective. Yeah. I think that everybody. More horror stories. <laughs> more similar perspective. All right, guys. Cool, Lawan. Thanks ah, for joining. Appreciate it. Sure. Of course. Yeah, it's always it's always cool to talk to Lawan. Uh, right. So, um, so Nicole, what I'll just do, I had uh, f- just a few people write to me about their highs and lows, so I'll just read them out t- to you. Uh, the first one was Rech Davidson One, who's the I, I love reading out Instagram handles like their names. <laughs> It's like, it just makes no sense. But Rich, Rich Davidson one uh, is a South African and I love hearing from South Africans who are in Germany. So it's always so such a kick when, when they get in touch and she's, uh, she's still in South Africa. Her low is that she had canceled trips this year. So she was planning a trip to Germany and she was also planning a trip to, I think to Mauritius for a, for a vacation. And uh, so, so, so her low, lows were canceled trips. And like she said, it was it's it's a low, but obviously comparative to some of the other things that people went through this year. Um, but they were really needing that break and and uh, really looking forward to getting away. And as it turned out, the I think the trips to Germany was important because her high uh, was that she landed a Berlin job from from South Africa. So she's she's nice. going to be moving sometime next year. She said, "I'm not in Berlin yet, but I had to wait to get my statement of comparability." And it's a doc that's necessary. Necess- doc that's necessary for some professions to get when applying for the EU blue card and had my visa appointment last week Wednesday for the visa so she, that looks like it's going to be happening sometime uh, next year and then Alexandra and she's going to kill me because I'm going to say her surname wrong Paucescu I think is how you say it she's from Romania and she she was in Germany she was the wife of a diplomat she'd also written a book was a guest on my podcast and she wrote uh, that her uh, high and low is the same thing, that they've uh, moved back to home after a long time being stationed here. But she said the good thing is that this is the first Christmas in seven years that she will be celebrating with family. So that's that's something that's amazing. Um, yes, and then storegod.heather wrote that her low is getting married without her husband's family and friends thanks to border closures. And I think that's one of the things that the p- pandemic has done this year is it's taken a lot of those kinds of special moments from people, right? Yeah, and these things that people were planning for so long and then they maybe postponed for so long and then eventually said, okay, we just have to do it, which is not exactly how most yeah. people want their, their wedding to go. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but but her high was getting married, so that's still cool. It's still it still went ahead, and it's it's a high of the year. Then someone Jelly wrote to me, and he's been in touch with me on Facebook, and he wrote, <laughs> uh, 
his high was listening to all the episodes of the, the German experience. So this guy listened to every single one of my episodes, which which blew my mind when he said, when he told me That's about awesome. that. Um, and that his low is that he didn't get a, a hoodie for listening to all the episodes of the <laughs> German experience. Some someone jelly. There is no merchandise. I don't have merchandise, but maybe that'll be something in twenty twenty. Coming twenty twenty. Do you have merch, Nicole? No, I've also been debating it, but it's, oh, I think it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Anyway, nobody is to offer stuff. other than my own. Um, you could, the, the the funny Auslander, the meme account, they have hoodies. I have a uh, one of my favorite hoodies. Okay. It's a panda, oh, really? so it's a panda, but he's holding fund. <laughs> the panda. <laughs> that is a very funny account as well. The yeah. the the funny Auslander, absolutely hilarious. Yeah, and. Okay, and then I think there was no. I still had a, a note from somebody named Aravind Two D, and he's living in Austria, which is close enough. It's kind of kind of Germany, <laughs> but uh, he's living in Austria, and he said his low was realizing that two vaccine doses bring zero change to his life because of an unvaccinated baby, and he had he, he I wrote to him to ask what he meant by that, and he he said we've had zero social life during the pandemic, and unfortunately also zero support because family could not visit so far. I was initially excited about the vaccinations because I naively thought that there was some normal there would be some normalcy in life. Alas, until the baby is vaccinated, we still have to hold off on a normal life and live as cautiously as possible. And of course, that's making life challenging at the moment. So I guess they just want to, uh, you know, limit exposure for the young kid. So that's that's kind of tough. That's rough. Um, but he's he's maybe got the best high of everyone. Um. His high was successful experiments in my lab after a long struggle. So it was like, that's what, that's actually why I had to get in touch with him because it sounded like he's a super villain working on something and we're yeah, going to be hearing yeah. a lot from him in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out that he's a researcher at a large engines research center and he's been doing some pretty cool laser-based measurements to study the flow of fuel and air inside engine components. And that is far cooler than anything I've done this year, Nicole. Also, me. I can I can second that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that is that's uh, that is it. Uh, Ar- Aravind 2D is in the chat as well. He's lots of data to process, <laughs> though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll there is. <laughs> I'm sure there is. I still have a theory as a super villain. <laughs> I was going to say, when you read the description, it did nothing to sway me from my original mental image. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. In fact, everything that he says now will be uh, uh, colored by this perception yeah, that we have exactly. in our minds. <laughs> Nicole, uh, I don't have anything. To, do you have anything more to add for this Instagram chat? Um, no. I mean, 2021 was a mess. <laughs> it was a mess. Bring on 2022. Yeah, but it was also some good stuff in 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 2021 as well. I mean, like a lot of people have some really positive highs and and life still went on, which I, I always find inspiring. People still get married even if like their husbands' families can't join and, so, and stuff like that. So that's always amazing to see. People are still getting jobs in Germany, uh, looking to move here. So as, as as much of a mess as 2021 was, as, there were still a lot of positive stories and and good things coming out of it. I think. Yeah, and a lot of things that maybe otherwise wouldn't have been highs, but because things were so low, you appreciate them so much more. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not saying that makes it all worth it, but it's the situation we're in and hugging your family after all of this is a different feeling than hugging your family was a couple years ago oh, yeah. when you could oh, just yeah. hop on a plane. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I think that moment when I saw my, my I remember my, I need to be careful because I get kind of emotional when I talk about it, but when I saw my dad and my brother at the airport, like as I was coming out of it, I don't think I've had a moment like that. That was like uh, a, a huge, huge moment, like just to hold on to them as tight as possible. So um, yeah, like I said, uh, it is a little misty in here, so we'll move right along. <laughs> Nicole, it is, uh, <laughs> despite us being sworn rivals, I will tell you this, that like doing uh, this charity challenge uh, on an annual basis with you is one of my highlights of every year that we do it. So I, I just wanted to tell you that as well. I, I fully agree. I think, um, yeah, I mean, we talk about this offline often, but it's it's hard running a podcast. It's a lot of work and and. We have moments, both of us, where we think, oh, God, what are we doing? Is this is this worth it? And it's an, uh, an ongoing evaluation. And for me, and I think for you too, one thing that is always an easy, yes, it's worth it, it is so worth it, is the charity challenge. I mean, that yeah. makes everything, yeah, different. It does. You know, things it like does. that aren't possible if we don't have such an amazing community, which we're so lucky to have. So 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks to you, Sean, for, well, uh, why am I thanking you? No, no go ahead. Please <laughs> finish your so thought. Finish your thought. <laughs> go right ahead, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you for being the best rival ever. Fine, I admit it. <laughs> 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 and yeah, and I just also wanted to shout out the people um, who listen to our shows. Um, yeah, you guys make it all possible. <laughs> and get in touch with us. I think if, if it's anything like it is for me, Nicole, it's just always amazing when someone writes on Instagram and or, or sends an email or something just to say, wow, I love your podcast. I love listening to it. It's it's. It's it's just it helps with that feeling, like you said. It's a lot of work. Uh, sometimes you forget like what it, what is my purpose with making a podcast, and just to get that feeling and, and people saying that they're listening, just even listening to a few episodes or just listening, just just tell us that you're listening, and it's it's amazing. And I love I love being in touch with those people. And somebody said to me today in the message, like they said, I really like your podcast, but I get I guess you hear it all the time. I'm like not as much as you think, first of all. <laughs> And second of all, <laughs> I never get tired of those messages because it's also, and that's also then a new contact and a new person that I'm chatting to and, and uh, building the community over time. So it's, it's things that I value very much. Yes. Agreed. All right. You said that perfectly. Go and donate still to the challenges. As I said, the links for our uh, respective uh, uh, donation pages are in our Instagram profile. Nicole, it's always fun chatting to you. Uh, I hope you have a good evening. Yeah, you too. I think we did it. I think we did our first live. I think we did our first like, live. <laughs> are we Gen Zers now? <laughs> totes. I don't know what the kids say these days. We did. We totes did an IG live. Yo, I don't know. How am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> we understood the assignment. Some people say that now. I don't really know why. Okay. Anyway, now we've ruined it all. But it was very fun. We've... Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for having me here. Um, I will go stop talking and saying embarrassing things now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Nicole. We'll chat again sometime. Bye.